and worship you. Glory be to Jesus. It says in Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me and he shall set me high upon a rock. Gracious Father, we thank you, O God. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for this time that we're going to gather together to worship you, God, to praise you. What a God we serve. Oh, Lord, we thank you, God, for who you are. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. We just want to praise you tonight and bless you, God, and lift up that glorious name. Father God, I pray that you bless our worship, oh God. Oh God, as we enter your gates with thanksgiving and in your courts with praises tonight, fill this place, fill every home with your sweet presence tonight, God. Lord, give us a hunger and a thirst to read your word. Oh God, and to know what you're saying for such a time like this. So I pray that you bless Apostle Raul as he opened the word again, Father God, as he prepares for the end time. Lord God, everyone will be attentive, oh God. Open their the eyes of their spirit to hear what you're saying tonight. And let us be a group that will be doers of your word. God, we bless you. And we say, have your own way among us tonight and fill us with your presence here. In the name of Jesus, I ask. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to the Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We are happy to be here today, O oh Lord, to celebrate you with the songs and the meditations of our heart, O oh Lord. And we thank you for this gathering that we have. Let my lips, O oh Lord, sing sweet songs unto you. And to the glory of your name, thank you, O oh God. Thank you. Bless your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Seems like never before. Oh, my soul. Lord, I'll worship your holy name. Praise the Lord. Revelations. Chapter 4, verses 11 said, 11 said, Thou art worthy, Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen and amen. Heavenly Father, Lamb of God and Holy Spirit, we stand before your throne to glorify your majesty. Your will be done in to our lives and all your children will say amen. Oh. God 
God, your will be done. Amen. Glory to your mighty name. Amen. God, your will be done. Amen. Holy Ancient of Days. Heavenly Father, Lamb of God and Holy Spirit, we stand before your throne to glorify your majesty. Your will be done in to our lives and all your children will say amen. Amen. God, your will be done. Amen. Glory to your mighty name. Amen. God, your will be done. Amen. Holy Ancient of Days, Heavenly Father, Lamb and Holy Spirit. We stand before your throne to glorify your majesty. Your will be done in to our lives and all your children will say amen. God, your will be done. Ah, amen. Glory to your mighty name. Amen. God, your will be done. Amen. Holy ancient of days. Amen. 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 Your will be done, my God and Father, as in heaven, so on earth, my heart is drawn to self-exalting. Help me seek your kingdom first. As Jesus walked, so I shall walk. Help by your same unchanging love. Be still, my soul. Oh, lift your voice and pray. Father, not my will, but yours be done. How in that garden he persisted. I may never fully know the fearful weight of true obedience. It was held by him alone. What wondrous walk faith to bear that cross, to bear my sin. What wondrous Love, be still, my soul, and lift your voice and sing. Father, not my will, 
for yours be done. When I am lost, when I am broken in the night of fear and doubt, Still I will trust in my good Father. Yes, to one great King I bow. As Jesus rose, so I shall rise in ransom glory at the throne. My heart restored. With all your saints I sing, Father, not my will, but yours be done. As we go forth, our God and Father, lead us daily in the fight that all the world might See your glory and your name be lifted high. And in this name we overcome. For you shall see us safely home. Now as your church, we lift our voice and pray. Father, not my will, but yours be done. And in this name we overcome. Because Father, not my will, but yours be done. Father, not my will. But yours be done. Praise the Lord. Not our will, but yours will be done, Father. Not I, but Christ. Not I, but Christ. His will, not ours. Before Jesus went to the cross, he pled his desires. But ultimately he's saying, Father, not my will, but yours be done. And we ask for the same desire to follow the, our Lord and Savior, to put his wills before our own. So, Father, we ask that you ascend the throne of our lives. We crown you King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship him now. How great and awesome is he. And together we sing. Holy is the Lord. God Almighty, the earth is filled with his glory. Holy is Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with his glory. The earth is filled with his glory. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship him now. How great and awesome is he. And together we sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. Holy is the Lord, 
God Almighty, the earth is filled with his glory. The earth is filled with his glory. Yeah, it's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's still rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. And together we sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are holy and you are worthy to be sanctified in righteousness. Who else is holy like our God? Our God is holy. It is him who commands all the hosts of heaven. It is our Lord who can make all other kings bow down. It is our Lord who whispers and darkness hides. It is our Lord who we worship in the beauty of holiness. It is our Lord who his splendor outmatches the sun. It is our Lord whose majesty rules with justice. It is our Lord whose power causes the dead to rise. It is our Lord whose name is greater than all other names. It is our Lord who would rescue us from our failings. It is our Lord who invites us to call him Father. What a great God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We ought to give him praise and lift up our hearts and our hands and give him praise. What Amen. other God rules with justice? What other God rules with kindness? What other God has such patience to wait for us, to wait for us to get it right? What other God would, would reign on the just and unjust? I call that a favorable and a God of justice and righteousness. And so we serve him today. We praise him today. And this is the God who fights for us. This is the God who fights our battles. He goes before us. Hallelujah. When the Red Sea is before us and the army is behind us, our God is here. He will not let the waters pass over us. He will not let the fires burn us. What a mighty God we serve. Lord, my heart celebrates you, O oh God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your promises. I thank you that heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall remain and shall stand forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I have nothing else to give you, O oh Lord, but the lips and the praises that come from my mouth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You hear me when I call. You are my morning star, though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield, though troubles linger near. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind the God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. 
The God of angel armies is always by my side. And nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful, always faithful. I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, who is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and sing. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and sing. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Yes, Lord. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Jireh. My Prince of Peace, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. You did not Create me to worry. You did not create me to fear. But you created me to worship daily. So I'm going to leave it all right here. My hands are raised because I surrender. Your will is what is best for me. I worship you because you're Jehovah Jireh. I bow before the King of Kings. I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you, Lord. I will put my trust. You did not create me to worry. 
You did not create me to fear. You created me to worship daily. So I'm not leaving all right here. My hands are lift because I surrender. Your will is what is best for me. I worship you because you're Jehovah Jireh. So I'm only fit all right here. I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you, Lord. I will put my trust in you did not create me to worry. Hallelujah. You heard what the song said. He did not create us to worry. In fact, the Lord commands us to praise him when we feel the resistance that is when we should push forward when we feel that we are anxious and that we were worried we must remember that in all circumstances that we must shout a hallelujah and give thanks to our lord it doesn't matter what the circumstances are but we must praise him we must lift up our hearts we must lift up our holy heads and praise the god who holds it all in his hands we thank him and he lift it because this is our father's world and so we put our trust in him because by the power of his words all things are upheld and continue to hold the sun has not fallen the skies have not fallen nothing everything is upheld by the power of his holy word and so we praise the lord at all times we please him at all times because we want the lord to say as he said about job this is my servant here we want him to be able to rely on us we want him to call us a friend as he called abraham we want us to say look at the servant uh, um this servant that has a heart like mine that that has that has a heart like mine which is david we want the lord to look at us with high regards he love us and we must please him with our praises we must live a lifestyle of worship unto our god no matter what is going on we must continue to give praises to him we must kneel down and give him the highest praises we must pay homage to his righteous and holy name because we serve a God that does not tell us to do evil, but tells us to do good even to our enemies. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for lips of praise and a heart of worship. And Lord, we come before you today to hear your word and that we may be transformed, O oh Lord, because when we are transformed, we can be a beacon of light to our communities, to all that are around us. So in the name of Jesus, we come to you with open hearts today to receive your word. We ask that you put your words in your servant's lips today in the name of Jesus. We come against all attacks of the enemy today that would try to distract us. We cleave the enemy's tongue to the roof of his mouth today, O oh God. And we ask that you open our hearts and minds to hear you in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch him and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open. 
our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, righteous Father. Thank you, compassionate Father. Thank you, kind Father. You're a good, good Father. That's who you are. And we worship you. We praise you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for always giving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I ended last Friday about about the working of miracles and we saw how the beast will perform miracles and uh, we saw the meaning the revelations of those miracles and how they are attacking so miracles will be common yeah in the kingdom of god and also in the kingdom of the enemy and they will perform miracles one of the greatest tools by miracles they are going to deceive many. They by It is by the power of their miracles. You know, not about God, but whatever power they have to perform them. As we saw last time, they are going to deceive people to worship the beast. And it's already started because the coming of the Antichrist will be with all lying signs, wonders and miracles. That's how he will come with the power, with the miracle, miracles thing. So believers need to realize we are finished with that. And tonight I am on the next gift in the list of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. And the next gift is the gift of prophecy. The next gift is the gift of prophecy. I was, I was studying and pondering about how to bring the explanation and how to bring this sermon of the gift of prophecy. Because the gift of prophecy is vast. Once again, it's a vast gift. And there are so many things because, because actually the Bible is full of prophecies. The Bible is a book of prophecy. And there are many aspects of the gift of prophecy. And I was thinking and asking the Holy Spirit how to bring the sermon, how to, how to put things in order so that people would understand, how to simplify, how to categorize. So this is the way I believe the Holy Spirit suggested to me, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 10 characteristics of the gift of prophecy. And then we are going to go into that one by one. Because under those under the, under those 10 categories, actually those are characteristics of the gift of prophecy and some are definitions because uh, the prophecy cannot be defined in one sentence because there are many aspects to it. So, uh, this is the way that we, were, we, we are going to go about. We are going to go look at different aspects or characteristics of the gift of prophecy, 10 of them. And even after that, under each one of them, maybe there are some subcategories. So we will, we will start off on the gift of prophecy tonight. So let me start off by giving you the 10 points about the gift of prophecy. These are the 10 characteristics or you can say different aspects of the gift of prophecy first one is prophecy is a burden of god prophecy is what <coughs> is a burden of god translated as a burden of intercession in the heart of man that is the first definition of prophecy prophecy now uh, okay before going into that Prophecy and prophesy, there are two different, technically, uh, in English, there is prophecy, that is P-R-O-P-H-E-C-Y, that is prophecy, and there is another word called prophesy, P-R-O-P-H-E-S-Y, prophesy. So, te technically, prophecy is the utterance of God, prophesy, prophecy is a noun, and prophesy is a verb, is an action. Okay. So don't get confused in that. Those are two different things. So prophecy, the first characteristic of prophecy is prophecy is a burden of God 
translated as a burden of intercession in the heart of man. And in the first definition, we will be able to locate or understand the operation of a prophecy. How does prophecy works in the first definition that I gave you? Second one. So I'm going to tell you all the 10 first. And then we are going to go into that. Second one is prophesying is dick. Okay. Prophesying is declaring the word of the Lord. Magnifying the Lord and his works. That is another way of prophesying or prophecy. What is that? Prophesying is declaring the word of the Lord. Magnifying the Lord and his works. Okay. So I have gone through the whole Bible and every aspect of prophecy I am going to cover under the gift of prophecy. So prophecy is not only the burden of God, but prophecy is also when someone's, someone declares the word of the Lord, you know, and magnifies the works of the Lord. What Moses and Aaron did, they danced and all those things, we will come to that. Under that dancing and singing and all those things comes because it's a part of the prophetic gift, even dancing and singing. So the second characteristic of, of a prophecy is prophesying is declaring the word of the Lord, uh, magnifying the Lord and his works. The third one, the third one, prophesying is declaring the preordained plan of God. Prophesying is declaring the preordained plan of God, the instructions of God, what God is going to do. That is the next aspect or characteristic of a prophecy. Okay, do we see that? We will come to the Bible. So, prophecy cannot be defined in one single sentence because there are many aspects of a prophecy. This is the third one. Prophesying is declaring the preordained plan of God, instructions of the Lord, uh, of what God is going to do. Fourth one. Prophesying is encouraging and building up the faith of God's people in the word of the Lord. That is another aspect of prophecy. Prophesying is encouraging and building up the faith of God's people in the word of the Lord. You know, when the Bible talks about uh, the apostle laid hands on them, they started to speak in tongues and prophesy. What they were prophesying? Through their utterance, they were building up the faith. They were speaking about things that will uh, pump up the faith. And pro in, that, in that category, we will come, subcategories, we will come that how, how can we prophesy along with tongues? Because many places in the New Testament, it says they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. They spoke in tongues and they prophesied. Are we understanding? Okay. What did, what did I say? Fourth one is prophesying is encouraging and building up the faith of God's people in the word of the Lord. The fifth one. The fifth one. God gives the gift of prophecy to supernaturally turn around the physical situation. God gives the gift of prophecy to supernaturally turn around the physical situation. That aspect of prophecy, you can, you can reverse a situation. You can turn around a situation if you have the gift of prophecy. To the explanation of it, we will come to that when we go one by one. The sixth one, the sixth one, prophecy of the Bible. Now, this is important. Prophecy of the Bible is centered around Jesus Christ. All the Old Testament prophecies lead to the revealing of Jesus Christ. The center of prophecy is Jesus Christ. Okay. The prophecies of the Bible is centered around Jesus Christ. All the Old Testament prophecies leads to the revealing of Jesus Christ. If you, if you go on Google and if you try to understand prophecy, you put, okay, prophecy meaning, prophesy meaning or prophecy meaning. Google will tell you that prophecy means prediction. But I want to tell you that the prophecy of the Bible is not prediction. Predictions are estimation. You know how the stock market goes up and up, up and down and there are financial analysts sitting, uh, doing business, looking at the stock market and they estimate, okay, maybe tomorrow the rates will go up. They are estimating things. They are predicting things. They are predictors, you know. 
but we are not predictors in the bible prophecy is not a prediction so i will never use that prophecy is prediction it is it is saying the definite word of the lord we will come to that afterwards so what did i say the sixth characteristic of a prophecy is prophecy of the bible is centered around jesus jesus christ all the old testament prophecies lead to the revealing of jesus christ it was not a prediction okay it will happen it may not it were definite words when isaiah prophesied about jesus he said a, a virgin shall bear a child they shall name him emmanuel it was it was it were details you know where he will be born and how what will be the spirit that will rest upon is the government will be upon his shoulder most of the things most of the things that isaiah wrote were prophecies about jesus revealing jesus so that is another aspect of prophecy seventh point seventh point this is also very important the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy we'll come to that in revelation 19 afterwards the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy so there is a gift of prophecy there is the spirit of prophecy that initiates prophecy and what is that spirit of prophecy it says the bible says it is the testimony of jesus christ is the spirit of prophecy and the book of revelation is the book of prophecy that needs to be followed the book of revelation is the book of prophecy that needs to be followed or obeyed it's there in Revelation 1. We will come to that afterwards. But let's go to the eighth, eighth, eighth characteristic. The gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy can be a temporary impartation. Another aspect of prophecy. The gift of prophecy can be what? A temporary impartation. The ninth point. The ninth point is the gift of prophecy and the office of a prophet are two different areas of operation the gift of prophecy and the office of a prophet are are two different areas of operation that is the ninth point the tenth point and the last one is the gift of prophecy also exists in the demonic kingdom where we will see prophecies as as predictions and not really as prophecies the gift of prophecy also exists in the demonic kingdom. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We have a new member there with Joanne. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. Listen to me. So, first point. We will, we will start. These are the 10 characteristics of the prophecy. We'll start off with the first one. Prophecy is a burden of God translated as a burden of intercession in the heart of man prophecy this is the important uh, definition of prophecy so i am going to take some time to explain this i have already taken sermons related to this maybe years back but uh, we are going to look at what is the definition that's why i place this definition at the first so that we will start off there with this one because this one is important what what is the definition of prophecy the first one prophecy is a burden of god translated as a burden of intercession in the heart of man so turn with me to numbers chapter number 11 verse number 29 <clears throat> numbers chapter number 11 verse number 29 then moses said to him are you zealous for my sake oh that all the lords all the lord's people were prophets and the lord would put his spirit upon them this is a prayer of moses this is what moses asked of god what did he ask god for what was his prayer he said Oh, that all the Lord's people would be prophets. And the Lord will put his spirit in all his people. Okay. Now, that prayer point did not come from his flesh desires. It was not a prayer point like, mm, I wanted a car. I wanted a good house. 
This prayer point is heavenly and not carnal. This prayer point is heavenly and not earthly. This, this did not generate from his selfish heart. It, he was able to pray that prayer point because he has walked with God for a long time. When you are walking with God consistently, being faithful with him, your prayer language changes. And the things that you start to ask is actually not what you want, but what God wants and what is on the heart of God. So the burden in God's heart gets translated to your heart as prayer burdens. And you start to, start to utter those prayers. Ariya Mansaka Bata. Hallelujah. Lord, let your kingdom come in that nation. Lord. It, so, so those things start to come in your heart. It's actually not generated by you, by your heart. It was generated in the heart of God. But it was because you are walking with God, because you are spending time with God. You are faithful to Him. You are serious in seeking Him. The burden on His heart comes upon your heart. His burden becomes your burden. And that burden translates as what? As a prayer, as an intercession. Do we understand that? Okay. Now, listen to me. So Moses prayed that prayer. After many years, something happened. This is not a prophecy, by the way. Okay. After, after explaining this, I am going to give you a revelation that you have to write it down. And and meditate on it. So Moses prayed. This is not a prophecy. This is prayer. This is this is asking. This is saying. This is this is um, explaining the burden that is on his heart. He said, "Oh, that all the people of the Lord would be prophets, and the Lord will will put His Spirit upon all of them." That was his heart cry. That was his prayer, and that did not the idea did not generate on his heart. Oh, it, it came from the Holy Spirit. I know many times when we pray, those who are intercessors, those who are serious with prayer, when you, many times it would have happened with you because it has happened with me. When you start to pray, you I literally knew it was not me praying the things that I was asking. The Lord himself was praying through me, his heart, to himself. It was like that. Okay, those prayers are powerful because those prayers are going to translate into a prophecy. Is going to translate into a prophecy. Okay, so after many years, something happened. Let's go to Joel chapter number 2, verse number 28. Joel chapter number 2, verse number 28. It says here, <clears throat> Joel 2, verse number 28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. What Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. 29, and also my men servants and on, on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Joel, Joel is prophesying something. What he is prophesying was initially a prayer burden in the heart of the intercessor. And what was a prayer burden in the heart of the intercessor was a burden on the heart of God. He got a hold of it. He prayed that prayer translated into a prophecy. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. The revelation I want to give you is there is no gift of prophecy without prayer and intercession ministry. Yes. There is no gift of prophecy. There is no prophetic ministry without a prayer and intercession ministry. Impossible. The base of the prophecy gift is prayer. <laughs> Are you understanding now? So, so it was a burden on the heart of God that was a prayer burden that became Moses' burden. He started to pray. After many years, a prophet arose and he prophesied. Joel prophesied. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Who prayed this prayer? Who asked this of God? Moses asked this of God. It translated into a prophecy. 
So if you are not pray, praying, you cannot operate in the prophecy, prophetic gift. Because prophecy, there is no gift of prophecy or a prophetic ministry without a prayer and intercession ministry. Yes. Hallelujah. So it all starts with a prayer burden. It translates into the, what comes into the mouth of prophets are the burdens of God that are translated to, through prayers of intercessor, intercessors that comes in the mouth of the prophets and they prophesy. So Joel prophesied. Okay. Then turn with me. There is more to come. Acts chapter number 2. Verse number 14. Acts chapter number 2. Verse number 14. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number 2. Verse number 14. But Peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice. And said to them, men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my words, for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out, uh, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams, and on my maid, men servant, and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. So this third stage is the manifestation of what Moses prayed. It actually happened. The manifestation of the purposes of God. That is the operation of a prophecy. That is how you know operation of a prophecy. Prophecy, first, what did I say, is a burden of God. That is translated as a burden for prayer and intercession into a heart of man. And when man prays that, it is translated into a prophecy. And when a prophet prophesies that, it is manifested in the physical. That is how prophecy works. That is the simple operation that I could, I could come to the understanding of how a prophecy works. Okay? Hallelujah. Um, let me show you some scriptures towards that. Hallelujah. In many cases, I want to prophesy something. <laughs> I want to prophesy something. The prayers that you prayed, which were actually the burdens of God, shall never go in vain. It shall come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. That is what I realize. That if you pray something, if you... <laughs> Hallelujah. If you pray something that was on the heart of God and you prayed that, it is, it is impossible that it will not happen. It shall happen. It shall happen. That is what I realized. That is the power of the gift of prophecy. And in many cases, you might be the prayer praying person and you might be also the prophet. So God will ask you to prophesy also for it to come to pass. Hallelujah. You see, for kingdom civilizations to be implemented on the face of the earth, it takes generations. So God is interested not only in the individuals, he is in, interested in having a legacy of the Holy Spirit throughout generations. You see what Moses prayed. It took years for it, it to come to Joel in his mouth. And then again it took years in the book of Acts for it to manifest. That is, that is some aspect of a kingdom civilization. The heavenly kingdom to be implemented. So we got to keep the faith. That's why the Bible says that these guys, Abraham, the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11, Abraham, Jacob, they journeyed for something, but they did not, they did not enter completely physically into the promise, but they journeyed and they passed away and went to the heavenly city. They came to know that the things they spoke Maybe it was not fulfilled in that generation, but it will surely get fulfilled. It is, it is a big picture of the kingdom of God being carried out on the face of the earth. So whatever you pray, which is a burden of God, shall never go in vain. It shall be translated into the physical. It shall be translated into the physical. That is what is the power of the prayer ministry and the prophetic ministry. It's powerful. Are we understanding the prophetic gift tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The prophetic gift, the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy. Okay. 
the prayer that the Holy Spirit prays through you is not going to go in vain. The prayer that the Holy Spirit is praying through you. That's why Apostle Paul encourages in his letters, pray in the Spirit, not in the flesh. In the Spirit means, I, I am praying what the Lord is praying through me. Okay? And, and many times, we practice tongues here. We are not unaware and we don't um, criticize any gifts in this ministry. Because the gifts of the, we, I ne we never say, oh, this gift has ceased. No gift has ceased or no ministry has ceased. We are walking in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So every, that's why I am taking this gift. And uh, by the way, this is the longest series I have ever preached. Tonight, I think is the part 11 or part 10, something like that. So the, it's the longest, longest series of a sermon. I have ever preached of the gifts of God. So prophecy is yet another powerful gift that people need to understand. Okay, I want to give you some scriptural references to show you that prophecy is actually a burden. Um, Isaiah chapter number 15, verse number 1. <clears throat> Isaiah Isaiah chapter number 15, verse number 1. Just that verse, the burden against Moab. And then Isaiah chapter 17, verse number 1, the burden against Damascus. Isaiah 19, verse number 1, the burden against Egypt. So I have taken that previously, many some years ago, this sermon. So prophecies of Isaiah were burdens. What burden? The burden of God against the nations. God wanted to speak something. So, it translated as a prophecy in the mouth of Isaiah. And he started to release those burdens uh, unto the nations. Alright? So, uh, again, the definition I gave you is, prophecy is a burden of God translated as a burden of intercession in the heart of men. Which is very important. That's, that is the reason... Why Paul writes what he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 verse 1. Turn with me there. 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 verse number 1. Okay. Uh, I am After this, I am going to take you to another operation of a prophecy in the book of Daniel. But first look at this verse. Which is in 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. And verse number one, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. That is the prophecy Apostle Paul is talking about. He's saying, okay, pursue love. First is love before the gifts love. For, that is what chapter 13 talks about. But we are not going to go into that. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. What aspect? This aspect. Because of this aspect, because every believer needs to get the burdens of God, pray and prophesy those things for, for God to fulfill His purpose. That is the operation that heaven chooses. That is how heaven chooses. So that there has to be a representative of God on earth who is a prayer warrior for God to fulfill His purposes. All right. Uh, another thing. Now, when you talk about prophecy, prophecy is highly related with some spiritual activities. And that spiritual activity is one, I said prayer, and the second is fasting. 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 So, when you see Daniel chapter number 9, let's go to Daniel chapter number 9. <coughs> Uh, Daniel chapter number 9. Daniel was on a prayer mission. Daniel chapter number 9. It says in the first year of Darius. Verse number 1. In the first year of Darius. The son of Ahasuerus. Of the lineage of the Medes. Who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign. I Daniel understood by the books. The number of the years specified by the word of the Lord. Through Jeremiah. The prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth and ashes. So he went on a prayer mission and 
the prayer mission the prayer mission was derived from the scripture he started to re read the book of the prophet jeremiah who started ministry before daniel and he saw that the jeremiah prophesied something his prophecy was god will accomplish 70 years of the desolation of the of jerusalem of israel in the land of babylon of the chaldeans so on the basis of that prophecy he started to what fast he started to fast on the basis of a prophecy if you are not fasting and praying on the basis of a confirmed prophecy on a burden of god your fasting and praying is in vain do you understand that if if you are fasting on something of the flesh i want something big i want a big ministry but is that written in the books is that written in the scrolls of heaven is that a is that an agenda of god do you understand that many people fast some of them fast for 21 days by no ways i am discouraging anyone from their long fast or whatever fast you are doing but listen to me what i am saying by of 21 days some people for, fast for 40 days i have seen some people fasting for 100 days i am some i have seen some people engaging in something called as uh, church annual fasting so the church is fasting they are fasting for some point breakthroughs cars bikes and jobs and beautiful wives to get wives to get husbands to get what not but is it written on the scroll of heaven so how did daniel fast daniel first opened the scripture and daniel from the scriptures understood okay let me see what is on the heart of god so he took Je uh, jeremiah who was the prophet of the lord he said there will be 70 years of desolations okay that will be accomplished in the land of the chaldeans so on the basis of that what he did he fasted and prayed after he fasted and prayed so you can see the fa the prayer of daniel okay so so this gift of prophecy what i am telling you is based has its roots in prayer and fasting okay a, a prophet that arises among you or comes and prophesies to you who is not a prayer warrior who is not an intercessor and who has never fasted don't take any prophecy from him don't believe even believe him because he is not standing on the ground of the prophetic gift which is prayer fasting intercession oh, okay hallelujah so daniel fasted and prayed so you can see his prayer and you sh we should meditate on what he prayed because he was repenting okay and he considered himself as a part of 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 the people of israel he said we have sinned lord we have broken the law we did not listen to you you spoke to us and all those prayers he's praying and he is he is seeking god so then let's jump to uh let's jump to verse number 20 daniel chapter number 9 verse number 20 now while i was speaking <coughs> uh praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. At the beginning of your supplication, the command went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Okay? That is prophecy coming to Daniel. That is how the prophetic gift operates. Prophetic gifts start to operate when you humble yourself before God in prayer, intercession, and in fasting. When you seek the Lord in the secret place, those are the foundational uh, activities that is need needed to prophesy. Do we understand that? <laughs> Don't believe anyone coming to you and telling you, I activate the gift of prophecy. He cannot activate the gift of <laughs> Hallelujah. I activate the gift of prophecy in you. I am telling you, he cannot activate the gift of prophecy in you. 
because it is it are, it is some steps that are required from your side for the gift of prophet and those steps are fasting praying humbling yourself before the lord interceding that activity i am i was not born a prophet and neither when i started off with the lord and i had a desire for the for do to do ministry i was not into the prophetic but what i i took upon myself to do is to pray so i was a i was a prayer warrior interceding you know and i am telling you i am not boasting but just to encourage you in my church i never missed a prayer meeting even i used to do i my job was round the clock sometimes i would have night shifts sometimes i would have evening shifts sometimes 9 in the night sometimes 12 in the night sometimes 6:30 in the evening sometimes in the afternoon but i will make sure the days on which the prayer meetings are there that i will go and tell my boss okay this is what my prayer time is so maybe i will come late maybe i will go early maybe i will break my shift or whatever sometimes i will take a holiday and we would have night prayer and uh, the church strength was of was of um uh, you know 7 80 8200 people the people who came in the church were 30 40 but the church strength was of 80 to 90 those 80 90 people will appear in the church on the christmas service or on a <laughs> or on a wedding that is held in the church all the 80 90 people will be there but when there is a church service 30 to 40 people will be there sometimes it will go to 45 50 and on a night prayer serve and night prayer service only two old ladies will come to pray two old ladies will come to pray and the pastor would be there the pastor was a prayer warrior so only four people three people will come to pray so there we understand the mentality of christianity that they don't know the power of prayer they don't know the power of prayer uh what they are interested in is uh, entertainment and um, you know functions and festivals so is easter service so called good friday service 90 people will appear there and uh, if there if there is christmas service 90 to 100 the full strength will be there in their coats and in their gowns and their ties very good but prayer the night prayer service three or four people that is where we and, and this is not about the church i was in i have seen this across churches i have seen this in some church, in in that church the pastor was good he was a prayer warrior and he never like me he never missed a service so we both of us will be always praying then we will go and pray for people so the pastor was a prayer but in many churches i have seen the pastors especially the western churches the american churches you know where the pastors are kept on a on a on a fat salary the pastors are, every month they will receive a fat salary what is their job their job for the whole week is to prepare one sermon that they will preach on sunday am i am i wrong that is what they do and if the church if the church congregation will take it upon themselves you know what <laughs> we want to pray some spiritual people will take the holy spirit filled people say we want to pray maybe on wednesday night thursday or friday oh you go guys pray i will come on a sunday he will not come there in the prayer meeting and he re- receives a very fat salary just to preach one sermon on sunday morning when you ask him what you are going doing throughout the week he will say i am preparing for the sunday service one sermon hallelujah hallelujah and that church is a mega church i am telling you numbers don't matter to the devil uh, numbers don't matter to the devil what the devil is afraid of quality it's not quantity the devil is afraid of qu- quality you know yes. it took only 12 for jesus to turn the world upside down he rejected mega congregations he he chose 12 of them trained them thoroughly who were interested to pray who were interested to listen to him who were interested to walk with him so he took 12 of them and he t- he turned the world upside down are we understanding what i was saying i was on daniel chapter number 9 so <clears throat> when he set his heart he was praying the next thing that happened is what a angel of god visited daniel and what he came with was skill to understand no wonder daniel could interpret visions 
interpret dreams interpret enigmas interpret handwritings that were not of the earth why he could do that because when you spend time with the lord seeking him and seeking his agendas to be fulfilled not yours what happened is impartations happen skills understanding revelations are given to you anointings are imparted to you that and you he, he said i have come to with skill to give to you gabriel said that i have come with skill to give to you the skill to understand hallelujah yes it says in verse 21 yes while i was still speaking in prayer the man gabriel whom i had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly reached me about the time of the evening offering and he informed me and talked with me and said oh daniel i have come now forth i have now come forth sorry to give you skill to understand that is an impartation that is a skill of heaven not not an earthly skill i have come i have come now to give you skill to understand people who spend time with god they can interpret dreams they can interpret visions they can bring forth the things of heaven down to and 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 through words they could explain it to the minds of human beings okay skill to understand and said oh daniel i have now come forth to give you skill to understand and the beginning of your at the beginning of your supplication the command went out and i have come to tell you for you are greatly beloved therefore consider the matter and understand the vision okay so he i would i don't want to go that is a prophecy about the 70 weeks that that is a prophecy about the coming of the messiah the prince of jerusalem and what he will do and the troublesome times that will come in jerusalem jerusalem will be destroyed that was the prophecy vision given to daniel okay so that is how i am teaching you how the gift of prophecy operates the gift of prophecy includes angelic interventions includes supernatural encounters the gift of visions and dreams are not separate gifts mentioned in the gifts of the holy spirit did you did you observe that visions and dreams are not there where does visions and dreams are included visions are and dreams are included under our subcategories under the gift of prophecy under the gift of prophecy okay are we understanding people of god so that is the operation operation a burden that was on the heart of a prophet jeremiah what he prophesied he's he, daniel took hold of that prophecy of that burden so he started to pray for something that was on the scrolls of god that was written by god that was a burden by god believers don't understand they just start to pray anything they want and nothing is going to happen and when it does not happen you go to the devil and seek him to make and he will make it happen so you get covenanted with demonic powers but when you pray you pray from the scrolls of god the burdens of god that is what he did when he started to do that intercede angel gabriel came gave him the vision gave him something okay and then explain when he understood okay this is the prophecy this is related to the book of revelation the things daniel's are daniel is re receiving from angels is is there what is it's closely closely related to the prophecies in the book of revelation that john wrote that john saw so this is about the coming of messiah we will not go into that prophecy but after receiving that prophecy when you read daniel chapter number 10 there were more encounters that daniel had in daniel chapter number 10 we don't he even saw jesus christ the person he described in Daniel chapter number 10, verse number 4 onwards, verse number 4 to 6. The person that he saw was actually Jesus Christ. When you compare Daniel chapter number 10 and Revelation chapter number 1, the Jesus that John saw, you know, torches of fire in his eyes. Um, there was a gold wrapped around his chest, the same characteristic. So it was Jesus that Daniel saw. And then after that, you see that um, another uh, Gabriel came again and he said, this time when I was coming to you, I was, I was blocked in the realms of heaven, the first and the second heaven. I had a fight 
and prince of Persia was fighting with me, had arrested me. So it took Archangel Michael to come and rescue me. Hallelujah. So angelic fight, spiritual warfare, vision, dreams are subcategories that come and fall under the gift of prophecy. Do we understand that? This is spiritual warfare happening because you are, you are pulling something that is from the third heaven. So when the messages, the angels take the messages to travel from the first, first heaven and come to you, there are demonic realms in between. And demonic angels start to fight the angels of God. And there is a spiritual warfare. From that we realize what is the agenda of the devil. The agenda of the devil is to block and hinder the communication between heaven and earth. And that's, that is why the devil does not want God's people to seek God and pray. Because if they start to pray, if they start to fast in the right way, what will happen is heaven will start to communicate with that man. Heaven will start to communicate with that woman. And the devil does not want to do that. That's why the prince of Persia was, was, ar had arrested the angel Gabriel. Why he arrested? Because he did not want the message of God to go to Daniel. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Do we understand Amen. that? That is where we realize the, the primary agenda of the enemy. In Isaiah it says, when darkness covers the whole earth, gross darkness the people, the glory of the Lord shall shine upon you. And then Gentiles shall come to your light and kings shall come to the brightness of, the, of your rising. What is the glory of God that will shine upon you? The glory of God that will shine upon you are the messages of God that are able to penetrate through gross darkness because of your life, because of your commitment to God, your prayer life, your fasting, your reading of the word. That darkness will not be strong enough to block the message of God to come to you. To block the burden of God to come to you. And then you pray with that. Then you prophesy. And things that are blocked by the enemy. The things of heaven will start to manifest on earth. Through your life. Through your speakings. Through your words. Through your voice. That is how powerful is the gift of prophecy. Yeah. I, am, I am teaching you. They, uh, this, this first characteristic. I am teaching you. These things so... Do you understand now? You, you might say, what about the gift of vision? The gift of vision, the gift of dreams. These are gifts, but it is not mentioned in the list of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 because it falls under the subcategory of the gift of prophecy. Spiritual warfare is under the gift of prophecy. Prayer, intercession, they come under the gift of prophecy. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we understand the operations now? Hallelujah. Okay. So that is how the gift of prophecy operates. So the first definition, prophecy is a burden of God translated as a burden of intercession in the heart of man. That is a single sentence, but that is the explanation. There are so much things coming into that. Spiritual warfare, angelic intervention, fasting, all those things. So I have explained you all those things. And let me go now to the second to the second aspect of the gift of prophecy. I, I told you the second aspect of the gift of prophecy is prophesying is declaring the word of the Lord, magnifying the Lord and his works, under which the first subcategory is prophesying that is declaring the wor works of the Lord or the word of the Lord and magnifying the Lord can, can be done along with the gift of tongues prophesying and speaking in tongues prophesying and speaking in tongues turn with me to acts chapter number 2 acts chapter number 2 verse number 6 to 11 <clears throat> acts chapter number 2 verse number 6 to 11 and when this sound occurred the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all this who, who speak Gal Galileans? And how 
is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those who those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, but Jews and both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. They were speaking in tongues, but they were speaking in earthly languages that they did not know. And in those languages, they were prophesying the wonderful works of God. That is, that is this prophecy, where you prophesy the wonderful works of God. Where you are prophesying means the, you are magnifying the Lord. Are we understanding that? One of the things that you need to observe is this incident that occurred in the upper room in Jerusalem is also a prophecy. The incident itself is a prophecy. <laughs> the incident itself is a prophecy. It is the manifestation of a prophecy that Isaiah and Micah, both of them prophesied. Let me show you that. Turn with me to Isaiah. Let, <laughs> I have to search that word. I don't remember that. Let's, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah. And chapter number, hold on. Chapter number... I told you in the beginning that the Bible is a book of prophecy. Uh, yes, chapter number two. Isaiah chapter number two, verse number one. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it shall come to pass in the later days that the mountain of the Lord's house. Which is the mountain? The mountain is the upper room. What is the Lord's house? The Lord's house is the people who gathered there. Okay, the 120 of them shall be established on the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. What is happening there? Crit Cretans, Arabians, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Phrygia, Libya, the whole nations coming to where? Or to, they, they just heard the sound and they, they were drawn to that place. What is happening there? It's a manifestation of a prophecy. Wow. Hallelujah. That is how. So do you, do you agree with me what I said? Prophecy is not a prediction. It's a confirmed word of the Lord. We are not predicting anything. We are saying what God is going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, Isaiah, another prophet, Micah. Now I told you, that about the similarities, not similarities, exactness of the things multiple people said in the Bible. They said the same things. That is the agreement of witnesses through which prophecies are confirmed. Agreement of witnesses. But let's go to Micah. Let's go to Micah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So, Micah chapter number four chapter number four it says now it shall come to pass in the later days that the mountain of the lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it many nations shall come and say come let us go up to the how to the mountain of the lord to the how to the house of the god of jacob he will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths for out of Zion the law shall go forth and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord going through from Jerusalem. Going forth in Acts chapter number 2. Do we see that? So what is happening in Jerusalem in Acts chapter number 2 itself is a prophecy that is getting manifested. Is a prophecy that is getting manifested. So what is happening there? They are actually making sounds of God. You know, I... I will not come to that. I'm, I've spoke about the sounds of heaven. They caught the sounds of God and they started to, Tongue is a sound of God. They started to speak in tongues. And they started to speak in tongues and actually they were speaking in languages, earthly languages of the Arabs, of the Mesopotam, well, Mesopotamians and all those people, Fergia, Libya language and all those languages. They are speaking in that languages. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of Babel, 
was destroyed where god confused the language and in the book of acts god made the people of different languages come together by the establishment of the city of jerusalem so jerusalem is in war with the tower of babel always hallelujah okay let me not go into that but <clears throat> prophesying and speaking in tongues you see that prophesying where they are magnifying the works of god another scripture acts chapter number 19 acts chapter number 19 let's go there acts chapter number 19 verse number six <clears throat> verse number six and when when paul had laid hands on them the holy spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied spoke with tongues and prophesied what they were doing they were magnifying the lord uh speaking and confessing about the wonderful works of god that has counted that is counted as prophecy Another scripture from the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 10. Verse number 44 to 46. Acts chapter number 10, 10. Verse number 44 to 46. While Peter was still speaking these words. The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues. They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Okay. So, so they are speaking in tongues. Alongside they were declaring the works of God. Magnifying the Lord. Speaking in tongues and that prophesying. That is one of the aspects of prophecy. Okay. Hallelujah. Are we understanding prophecy is not just saying about the future. There are many aspects of prophecy. We are going to cover that one by one. Another subcategory of prophesying which is declaring the works of the Lord and magnifying the Lord is another subcategory. The second one is prophesying in singing, music and dancing. Prophesying with singing, music and dancing. Worship, music uh, that comes from the Lord. Anointed music and dancing and singing and tunes are closely related to the gift of prophecy. So this is one of the areas that I'm going to show you. Next, we will see in another area where Elisha prophesied when a music player started to play the music. But let's see that. For, let's see this one. Prophesying the works of God, magnifying the Lord in music, singing and dancing. Let's see that. First Samuel chapter number 10. <clears throat> First Samuel chapter number 10, verse number 5 and 6. First Samuel, chapter number 10, verse number 5 and 6. After that, you shall come to the hill of God, where the Philistine garrison is. And it will happen when you have come there to the city, that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place, with a stringed instrument, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them. And they will be prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. That is another aspect of prophesying where they are declaring the marvelous of works of God. They, they are declaring things of thus says the Lord when with, along with the guitar, along with that stringed instrument, with the tar, tambourine, with the harp, with the flute, with singing and dancing. Okay? Another aspect of prophecy. Another scripture. Exodus chapter number 15. Verse number 20 and 21. Exodus chapter number 15. Verse number 20 and 21. Then Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel in her hand. And all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed, triumphed gloriously. The horse and its riders he has thrown into the sea. So Miriam the prophetess, what prophesying she is doing? She is singing and dancing with timbrels and she is declaring the great works of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when the spirit and the gift of prophecy 
comes upon someone, it can also translate into a tune. It can translate into a certain scale of music. And you might sing a song which will be a prophetic song. Okay? So prophecies can be songs that will come along with music and dancing of magnifying the Lord. That is also a prophecy. That is also for that also falls under the gift of prophecy. Are we understanding that? Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Now I want to go ahead. But let me stop here. Let me stop here. If I the next point is prophesying is the, the next category, the third point of prophecy is prophesying is declaring the instructions of the Lord the preordained plan of God and what he is going to do. It, it is a vast topic. So let me stop here. And then next time we will continue on the gift of prophecy. And let us pray. Hallelujah. I pray. This was the prayer of Moses. He said, Lord, may all your people be prophets. May all of them be filled with your spirit and let all of them prophesy. Let all of them prophesy. Father, and that is what you have spoken to the New Testament church, that you shall pour out your spirit on all flesh and they all shall prophesy. Father, let them be receptors of the burdens of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let them Amen. be the conduit. Let them be the representatives of heaven on earth who are able to break the realm of darkness that exists in the first and the second heaven. Oh, that, that will be able to receive from God. Oh, Lord, things, mysteries, words, Lord, prophecies, burdens, Lord, purposes of God, breaking through, Lord, the realms of darkness that exist in the first and the second heaven, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will enrich them with heavenly knowledge. You are enriching them with heavenly knowledge tonight. Oh, Lord, even as Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians, chapter number 14 verse 1 that pursue spiritual gifts uh, pursue love and spiritual gifts but all the more that you might prophesy i pray in the mighty name of jesus even as your people are coming to the understanding of the gift of prophecy lord and next time we will continue on that father i pray that you they will seek for the gift of prophecy they will understand Amen. lord that the gift of prophecy cannot be activated by a man but the gift of prophecy can only be activated father oh lord when they perform certain activities and that is prayer fasting humbling themselves before the lord seeking the lord in the secret place that is where oh father the gift of the prophecy starts to function in a believer's life father in the name of jesus and you said lord let uh, you, you will pour out your spirit on all flesh that your sons and daughters shall prophesy lord oh father the prophetic anointing the prophetic gift you want to pour upon all believers because that is the gift to lord that will bring the purposes of god down on earth lord destroying lord the kingdom of darkness and manifesting your will your kingdom your civilization on the face of the earth hallelujah thank you father for this time we want to give you all the praise honor and glory lord and even as we continue further lord next time lord that you will help us in the name of jesus christ and the coming week, you will keep your people, preserve them and bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. And we give you all the praise, honor and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.